So today we're going to take a look at the source code of a website so you can see what it looks like and how to interpret it and read it and modify it. So this is gazetteextra.com. We're going to take a look at the source by clicking on view page source, which you can do in any browser. I'm using Chrome. It takes a second here. And you can see the code that was used to generate the page that you see. This is all uh, all HTML generated from a, a language actually called Django that comes from the CMS, but we'll skip that. Here's the metadata. This is the data that the uh, search engine sees, so it can properly categorize the site. There's a link to the CSS, which we'll talk about a little bit uh, in a little bit. So here you see all kinds of uh, code. Here you actually see the code for the navigation. Is that extra? WCLO, WJVL. So if you keep following down the page, you can see where all this content is. Now we're getting down to the navigation. Uh, so you see news here and all the items that come under the news category in the uh, in the navigation. And the, you can see all those items here now. And then weather, opinion, all of that is right here. You, so you can see how that's all categorized and built. I'm going to go a little further down the page and you can see, uh, for example, some of the text. In this case, you can see tennis anyone, which the code we're actually looking at is the alternate text if you were to mouse over the uh, the image. But that's, uh, you know, that that's the actual text there that tells the uh, the browser what text to put in that particular spot. Go down a little further. And now we'll, let's look at some tags. There's a strong tag. Strong is to make text bold. Now we don't have a lot of that on this page, but in, we do have one case of it here uh, for the uh, editor's note. And note that you have to have uh, the tag open and close. So any, anything between that tag is going to be uh, bold. Now if you were to not put the close tag on there, everything on the page after that would be bold. Uh, now let's take a look at Take a look at some other code here. All right, now we're looking for line breaks. Uh, you're going to see these a lot on on sites. Uh, that small piece of code is just a line break. All it does is make one, uh, like one hitting return once. Now these, that's the li tag. That's the um, uh, to create bullets. So you can see the bullets here under the blogs. And again, it's important that you close tags because otherwise the what you're telling it to do will be repeated throughout the rest of the site. Yeah, here's here's the LI tags, here's the uh the bullets. You'll have to excuse me the screen I'm looking at, it's uh it's hard to actually read these. Uh, now we're going to look at the, just the, the p tag, and this is just you know standard paragraph style um, text, which this this is the particular piece that that we found here, the uh, blurb about Aaron Rodgers. So again, anything between the p and the close p tag is all going to appear as plain text. And again, the CSS will tell the browser what to do with uh, text that's in between the p tags. So let's look at uh, image SRC. This is a piece of code that uh, tells the browser to display something. So it's going to d display this image. Uh, and what's this particular image? That's the GazetteExtra.com logo. So in the code, there's uh, you know uh, an address to this image. And, and so when the the browser gets to that piece of the, the code where it's you know, trying to decide where to put, you know, what image to put there. There's a, an address that takes it to that particular image, and then there's the alt text there. If you were to mouse over that, it would say uh, gazetteextra.com. So now let's copy all of that code and put it into a Notepad file, which you can you can do this with any site. Uh, so all this, this is all the code that we were just looking at. I just copied and pasted it into a note, Notepad file. 
So it's all here. Uh, let's make some modifications to it, and uh, we can see uh, you know just how many things we can do with it. Uh, what can we change here? All right, uh, so we have this piece of text here, this timestamp that you see at the top of the uh, latest news area here. That piece of text. Let's change the font size on that. Let's change it to H1. Find where we are here. So we're going to change that to H1, which should make it bigger. Uh, but again, H1 is going to be defined by the, the CSS file, and that's going to tell the browser what to do with it. So we're going to save it here. We have to save it as a .html file so that we can view it in a browser. So anyone can do this. You can do this with any site. And just save it to my desktop here, and then let's open that file in a browser. Hang with me here. Try that again. There we go. Look at our text. Much bigger. Uh, we wouldn't necessarily want it to look like that, but you know, just to demonstrate uh, you know, what some of these things do. So that you know, regulates the size of the code. Let's find something else we can modify here. We can just change text. So if you find a piece of text you want to change, just to demonstrate that you can change it, let's change Edgerton here to Milton. Always make sure you save it and refresh the page so you can see your change. There we did. Yeah, we just changed the copy, changed the the name on there. It's very simple. You can do that with anything in this page. Um, so as you can tell, it's easy to you know take code from sites that you want to use and uh, and use it. It's not difficult. So let's link to the CSS here. Now this is the CSS file which includes all the instructions for how to modify or how to uh, uh, format the site. So it's a lot of, got a lot of instructions on uh, things like padding and font size and font style and color and background colors. Uh, you use CSS so that the site looks consistent and has the same rules that uh, that govern how it's how it appears throughout the site. So, uh, and instead of putting this code right on the page, what you do is you put it in a file and you link to that file so that if you want to ch make changes throughout the site, you just change the code on that one file, that, that one CSS file, and it uh, affects the entire site. So that's a brief overview for you.